attention, and then the pump takes over. Now, if you don't have a generator, you better have power because the power goes out, mm -hmm. it's going to fail. So this client of mine was a was a, gen, a Generac dealer, and literally he hooked up his neighbor. Hey, they sent me a video of the last big heavy storm. Him and the neighbor were sitting in the garage having a beer while everyone was pulling their carpeting out of their basement. Oh man! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've had some amazing. And this past June, we're, I've been doing this 33 years. In 33 years, we've never had the opportunity and the emergencies that we had this year. Really? Oh, really? I couldn't handle it. Just the volume. I just felt bad because the people that were calling the emergencies, emergencies, emer help, help, help. What can you do? And this is because of the rain you had in June. The infrastructure the cannot handle the, the, the volume. I mean, they're calling when some of these things 500 to 1,000 year storms. Really? Mm -hmm. wow. It ain't 100 anymore. Well, you know, two years ago we had canoes in North Ridgeville. Yeah. <laughs> People go to canoes. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we've had a lot. So, uh, this system you developed and you uh, aren't able to patent it? They say you can patent the idea, but if if anybody can actually do it, you know, there's a lot of tricks to it. That's why we won't share anything, you know, because there's a lot of detail. If you miss one detail, it'll fail. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, is if you can do it, God bless you. But you know, you just trial and error, trial and error. And you know that the thing is, we did a municipality that hired us to do it. This is how I got involved. They all came to me at one time and they said to me. Listen, we have this street that has been flooding for over 50 years. And I went in there and I evaluated and, and talked to these people. There's a woman that still lives there. She was there since she was a child. She's in her late 70s right now. She said, all the houses had a valve. It was all those old cast iron valves. You know, now we have those high-tech PVC valves. Mm -hmm. Everyone had a valve. And they said that this water just kept coming. And I said, does it come up through the drains? And they said, oh, not really, just a little bit. So that's when I thought, and the service supervisor of this municipality came to me and said, John, what do you think? So me and Zen, we basically said, we put our heads together, we said, let's, let's do a three-dimensional CAD drawing about how we would recommend this, how we would remedy this. So it went to engineering, and the engineer basically said, let's do it, sounds good. So we put, we put it to, to work, and, you know, it was, God, it was 11, 12 years now. Um, I never followed up. You know, we're building the business, everything's just changing, every year everything changes so much with the building science team and getting getting involved with everybody um, and education. Education is everything in this business, right? <laughs> I mean, educate yourself before you put a lot of money into the ground. Um, we had this these big storms, so I hired uh, a friend of mine, Dave, uh, to go door to door. We gave him all the addresses and I said, take a survey, ask him how everything's going. and majority of the people literally um, were trying to get a hold of us, but they had no way of getting a hold of us because nobody knew that the system was, was fixed, even though the city paid us. The city paid us okay, to fix this problem, which we did. Ten years later, we were at 100% success, so I said, if it's not broken, don't fix it. So just keep rolling with the same design. Well, the city has no record of any of these houses, oh. it was uh, five houses on one road, and then they gave us 14 more on another. 100% success, but it all disappeared because you know why? Everybody in that city needs a valve, and the city would go broke if they yeah. would have to pay oh. for everyone's valve. Oh, oh, oh. So, so it, the file disappeared. It disappeared, but we still have our file and our canceled checks. From the city. So all you have to do is send a letter to everybody. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't want to open up no can of worms. So you know? understanding a retention well, pond. Well, people's basement. You, you have a uh, mini retention Basin. pond, if you see, and it handles the seepage around the pipe and gets rid of it. Well, no, 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 no. no the, the seepage around the pipe that's coming after when the valve is yeah. is closed is the method that we use to hold back the water from following the actual trench. Okay, of the original excavation. That's where you use that. Uh... We, we we use the seep collar. Okay, we do the seep collar now with with the retention basin. The retention basin is we have a 
a, a, we have a, a storm sewer surge that is working its way through all the neighborhoods mm -hmm. and it's flooding everyone's home. Mm -hmm. We come in and we install a backwater preventer on the storm sewer system. So mm -hmm. when that water starts backing up the road, that valve closes, yep. closes, right? Yep. So now there's nothing coming from the road. It can't because mm -hmm. of our system. So now the house has to drain. Mm -hmm. So as that valve is holding back all that head pressure from the roads and, and everything that's coming, going through that, trying to make it to the creek, okay, mm -hmm. the house has to drain. So our system allows the house to drain through a mini retention basin. So cool. And, and that's so, so, that, that, so In cool. other words, if it begins to rain and it's all the water that's coming off the roof has to go somewhere. Or you flush the and toilet Unless or it's no? backing up, it'll always or naturally unless go. Unless you flush the, yeah, if you flush the toilet. What about the toilet? Now, is the that toilet is a totally separate system than, than the storm system. That's another retention system. Right. Unless you're in the city of Cleveland, which the city of Cleveland right. is a mess. It's, it's, it's literally a combined sewer. You take a shower. While it's raining outside, you flush the toilet, it's all going in the same line. Get out of here. Oh, yeah. It's all going in the same line. A lot of cities line. are like that. Yeah, it's combined. That's why your, that's why your water system. bill and your sewer bills are so high. Right, right? I mean, yeah. so now, your sewer bills double the water bill. So the They're municipalities triple. out of the city of Cleveland basically have their own treatment centers. You know, where all the waste goes to and gets treated before it goes back out into the lake. And they pump it out into the lake, which is great. But, you know, the city of Cleveland has a lot of work to do, and I'll tell you what, we'll never be out of work, ever, ever, <laughs> ever. Have you ever been to the sewage treatment plant? Oh, yeah. And seen the tomato plants grow? Oh, out? yeah. <laughs> what tomato and in the plants? piles of vitamins. The what vitamins? Uh, the tomato seeds pass through your system, right. down into the toilet. Yeah. They get into the sewage treatment, and, of course, all that fertilizer, right. you know, the effluent. Right, so and they grow. <laughs> the tomato plants growing in oh, yeah. plants. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, I was. Hey, I got a friend. Of mine, you gotta be kidding me! I got a friend of mine that took me for a tour, and they they shake everything out. and They have screening. You know, not only do they pull out all kinds of crazy stuff, but the vitamins. You know, like you take your vitamins, okay. you think that the vitamins are being absorbed in your system. You're crapping them out. And they They're, pass right through you. They yeah. pass right through you. Yeah. They're so full of fillers, they got nothing in them. That's why it's so important when you when you want to take your vitamins, you want to go someplace where they have, they have soluble, good vitamins. Half these vitamins buy at the store. They're there in the sewage plant. <laughs> it's unbelievable. They don't work or they don't work. Well, they don't even melt. You, you take it. You, like, you, you eat it's like you're swallowing. So you a piece buy of 20 wax. bucks of vitamins. And the sewage treatment is the one that gets them. Yeah. The, the test is to get a glass of water, put the vitamin in right. there, and if it dissolves, it apart. It's okay. you're cool. Right. But if usually, it it's still it's just it a solid. It like a stone. Right. You know. Yeah. Oh, my God. Right. Right. Yeah. It's crazy, man. So people buy these vitamins thinking they're like saving right. their little lives. Right. And they just pass straight through like a and tomato seed. And it ends seed. up like a tomato seed. Yeah. They're like a piece of corn. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, Jimmy, you're big on vitamins. Right. So what do you, he, he said you put it in water? Or what's it well, test? Well, it's called chelation. Your body has to chelate uh, the nutrient before it absorbs. And, and, uh, and it's all a about how well does this stuff chelate in your body. And, and you're right. I mean, most of them are just junk. So I, I should buy my vitamins, drop them into a, a water. Yes. Well, that's the Tom Jones methodology. And, and if it doesn't dissolve, like, how long? It's like uh, it starts almost immediately if it's right. going to dissolve. And right. if it doesn't dissolve... <laughs> it doesn't. It you're you're yeah. pooping that out to, either. You're pooping right. that right out. Right. your acids and right. so on. Yeah. yeah. So basically, what it is is you have these these all these sewer systems that are basically supposed to be to creeks, and when you have infiltration cross connections, which mean that the water from the roofs is going into the sanitary. This is the reason why sanitary backup, because sanitary lines are supposed to, it's, you know, in the suburbs they they're specifically designed to go to the treatment plants, mm -hmm. and sewage water is not meant to flow fast. So the it's gravity, that, right? It's, it's just gravity, a little like bit. It's, you know, half a percent, one percent. So, you know, it, it's literally like the the material has to float. If the water goes faster than the material, the water's going to go fast. It's going to leave the debris in the pipe. So exactly. It's designed so, you know, everything floats 
like a little canoe it into does it, does it coagulate like a, right does it's got it a like clog so up. this is the reason why things clog up because sometimes you know you get bellies and lines whoever digs the, the sewer is they don't put the proper fill you put the piping in it's good for undermining bit, undermining it starts to settle once those pipes start to settle they start to seep and leak once that seepage is leakage then you have a void and then you have wash out you know you know in HVAC we do a drain line like this the water leaves the coil so fast that we start to curl and plug it. If we get it as close to level, maybe a one inch drop in 20 feet, then it remains wet and it takes the effluent with it. And that's what he's talking about. Constant. Right. Right. So now these cross connections and these combined sewers in the city of Cleveland, if you try to do our system in the city of Cleveland, these older homes, all the downspouts that take the roof water, generally travel under the home so mm -hmm. we're seeing a lot of uh, you know a contractor just went into Cleveland Heights and ended up putting in a backwater valve in the front of the ladies basement to stop the backup not doing his research and his due diligence to be able to understand wait a minute you know what is there anything else tied into the back side of this valve right uh -huh. lo and behold the valve shuts the basement floods. Where's the water coming from? The lady freaks uh, out. Roof. She calls us. No, the whole backyard went down to the to the carriage house, and they have all their sewer for the driveway, right. the carriage house. That all runs to the corner that takes the water from the downspout, and it's trapped, and it goes under the floor of the basement to the same line as the toilet. The valve is active. <coughs> the basement floods with clean static pressure. water. It's not sewer water, yeah, it's clean water. Well, what now. about what about but it's, but it's basically a uh, drainage thing. You know, right. Uh, what right, about right. like municipalities like um, we we live in Mentor or like Cuyahoga County we have put Mentor, they make them disconnect right all the downspouts. Right. Now, why why do they do that? Because certain cities don't make Recently, they've been doing that a lot in a lot of our cities. What do you mean disconnect? They that's disconnect the downspouts. The gutter? Or yeah. the no, the gutters. And they, they take it out of the... Uh, they, they want you to splash it on your Toledo. property. Right. Toledo has no... Right. Why do they do that? It's probably because they're tied into the sanitary. They can't handle the flow. The right. sanitary is never designed to handle fresh water. Or the, the storm sewer system on the road that's taking the road water can't handle the volume. And it's just it just needs to be upgraded. All the places out there, out east, close to the water, those old little towns and stuff, they need upgrade. So, you know, you have, um, you know, the sanitary engineers that are always constantly trying to figure out problems. That's why they're doing these underground retentions, three, four hundred feet down to the ground. They're like cities. Really? They're like cities. They Cleo's have got one of those, right? Cleo, Cleo. Oh, there's a lot of them. 200 Not million just dollar one. project. Right, 300 right. feet sure. below ground. Three, 400 feet below the ground, and they create this mud. There's tr trucks drive down in there. and they Like a salt mine in Detroit. Right. And what they do yeah. is when the overflow from the big storm comes uh -huh. and the city's sewers can't handle it, it's just like my system. It goes into this 400 foot deep, big mud. It's like a huge, millions and millions of gallons. And then they have these monster high power pumps. After everything settles down, they drain it. They into, it the into the lake. Yeah. Well, they, they actually wow. drain it back <clears> into <throat> the Zepro separators down by Garfield Heights. Well, yeah, if it's and, sewage, yeah. Yeah, if it's sewage, and then they put it in the lake. But so they actually have lift pumps or sump pumps, if you will. Big pumps. Enormous. Enormous. Yes. I'll be there. Oh, this yeah. One that, when, when does this start? Well, they've been the, doing it for years. So at my you? rental property, I live down, I have a rental property in Old Brooklyn, okay? After I bought the property, I got this letter in the mail, and they says, well, you have, there's an easement through your property. And I says, well, what do you mean there's an easement? Well, it's called the Big Creek Interceptor. It's 80 feet down. It's 60 inches in diameter. It was made out of red terracotta clay block that they, really? built, that they built foundations out of. So McNally uh, Tunneling Company, great. I mean, there's not too many people that do this kind of work, literally came in and lined the entire sewer system with this fiberglass uh, insert. Capsulin or something? Yeah, from, it, was, it was special from, from Texas. They had a tear house down to, to build the hole to be able to lower the piping oh, in. So when they got on top, there was these like, like little bucket, like they looked like go-karts. And they had these big things and the guy's laying this thing. And the pipe comes down and hooks into it and they roll down in there and they got a guy mudding the joints with, oh, with fiberglass. God. 
and they would send us pictures. They would send us pictures. When I tell you, we opened up, you know, if you ever open up a, a, a lid, a sewer lid, those, those interceptor sewer lids, you open that, that one lid up, and then there's a lid that's plastic with two handles. There's so much vacuum, when you open it up, and you look down, and you think the shaft is going to be straight. It was made out of brick, 80 feet deep, and it looks serpentine all the way down. <laughs> and you look down, and it's like a raging river. If you were to fall down, you'd get all beat up by it. You'd probably be dead by the time you hit. But once you get here, gone. You ain't going to find you. Amazing what goes on underground. And this thing's old. Oh, 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 you know, it's old. Oh, oh, it's from way back in, you know, when they when they yeah. built this town. Under the cities. Under the city. I heard that they still had wooden sewers. Sewers made of wood. And water lines wood. still made of wood. Water lines. No. Water mains made of wood. I swear. Anyway, wood? You know, wood water lines? Wood. Not lead. Wood. 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 Hey, does, does Cleveland have uh, <laughs> uh, utility steam? Yes. The power. Oh yeah, Case Western Reserve. So, uh, so they've got the tunnels with the. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, it's all downtown. And, and How do they get in those tunnels? How do you get into them? Yeah. You, you want to go, huh? Huh? You want to? Mark wants to go into tunnels. I'll come with you. Well, I, let's get into them. How we get into them? I can make some calls. Do it. Actually, okay. actually, if you want to go, I have a friend of mine with um, that that has um, that knows a lot of people. Actually, works for the company. We could go if they had one of those retention projects going. They'll put us in the bucket, you know. You got, wow. and you, and they'll they'll take us down there for a tour before before they they consider it completed. I'm yeah, gonna take elevators. you, up on that. you go down. I'm gonna take you totally. If you want to do it? I'll call. Yeah. Matter of fact, I get to do a conversion for one of the uh, one of the guys that uh, can help us out. We I mean, only tells I ever get to go in, into are like abandoned buildings, yeah. asylums. You know. Yeah, all right. I mean, right. I. I they're really cool. I love tunnels. I mean, you don't get chased off the properties at all. Uh, yeah. You know what? We were at one. We were at one, and the sheriff. I I, go, I always go up with a couple people. You know, we like we have different right. groups. So we're like as big as Santa Sal. It was a sanatorium. It was a tuberculosis sanatorium. Right. And wow. so we're like, okay, you go this way, I'll go that way. So we like split up go around the building, just to like cover grounds quicker to see how we're gonna get in. You know, like it's a window, a fence. So as we're coming around, we see this police officer. He's like up on the hill. He's like watching us, right? Uh oh. And my buddy has his remote control car. We got these cameras, and we definitely don't look like bird watchers. You know? yeah. <laughs> so we get up there. And he goes, Marco, the cops watching us. You know, and we're like walking. We're like, okay, we just drove four hours to this place. This guy isn't gonna watch us. I go, screw this shit. You know. Let's go. I go right up to the cop car. I, walk, I turn around, make a 180, right up to, hey, what's up? How you doing? Hey, what are you doing here? I'm a, I'm a park ranger, you know. And I, and I go, hey, we start talking. I go, we're bird watchers. And he rescues finches. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and we start talking about this finch, you know, that he rescued, you know. that, the, And, and uh, it was like totally into it, you know. Before you know it, we're like, we're best friends with this guy. And then I asked him, like, so do you work here all day long? You know, because oh no, I got nine other parks. So, oh, so you like just leave here and go to more parks? Like you're not coming back? You know? He goes, oh no, I'm not coming back for at least six hours. <laughs> all right, that's our window. Up. Yeah, you know, so that's what we got in. We found a manhole, a manhole, underground manhole. Went down. We about a mile of tunnels. Wow. Underground tunnels. Wow. And we we went to tuberculosis and Santa Salem or sanatorium. And it was very cool. Yeah. We have to be grateful that it didn't start raining. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of fun though. Right. <laughs> yeah. So you, you, I see the one with the chair. You got video of yours. Oh, you went in there and you sat on the chair. chair. You sat on the chair and it broke. You had that big long you had a big oh, long Oh, that was stuff. different. That was in the Richmond building. Was it? You know, the Richmond building oh, is is, is an 800,000 square foot building that nobody could get into. And then one day I drove by and like there was like an open board. So I'm like, I'm going to go check it out, you know. So sure enough, I went in and I'm like, well, you know, I'm in here. I might as well just check out this building. A lot of great graffiti, man. Yeah. yeah it's graffiti. amazing. You know, they, they're called taggers. Uh, taggers. Really? And there's a couple times we met taggers. And like you see these, they're young people, and they're like they have their they they do they they believe 
and like their friends. It's like this underground world. Urban art. Yeah, it, Urban it, art. it's beautiful. Right. And yeah. and they're they're not rich kids. These are poor kids. Right. But they they totally it, they, they probably do this stuff on the rare old cars and well, yeah. under down, bridges. Down, down by us, down down by on Quigley in West Third, we met the taggers. And they came to us and they asked us, they said, could we use your building? If you ever need anything, we can do it for you. So I says, sure, go ahead. You know what they did? We got the railroad tracks behind our building. They set up a projector on the railroad tracks and shot the projection of this American oh. Eagle. And then a helicopter, black op with, with, with guys going down the, okay. the, the, the rope. And then they put the POW, I mean, and they sketched it all from this projector. projector. And then they came in with their freaking spray paint. And it was, I mean, beautiful. I mean, you should stop down and take a look at it. I want to check it out. They the back just, of your building. Right. And they just did the building on the corner. And then they just wiped it all out and did a new, a new thing. So I guess if you give them permission, they do it for free and it's, you know, art, expression. And if you ever need anything, they'll come out and do it for a, a you know cheap, cheap price. You know what they use? They take fire extinguishers, and they charge them really? with the paint. Really? So they sit. They they could shoot thirty feet in the air. Wow! So like when you see like when you drive by a freeway and see a building like this, yeah. like how do they do that? Right. And the water tower. They're on the ground I've done with that. kids. And, they're like, Shh. and it's kind of like it's not great, but they use these far, charged fire extinguishers wow. with their paint. I and mean, they spent some money on this. Right. Stuff. And I've seen these guys do this. Right. They, they, they 30 feet, 40 yeah. feet, no problem. Well, you know, they got that anti graffiti <coughs> paint. Yeah. $200 a gallon, right? Cool. But if you paint your building with this paint and they come in a graffiti, you can take your hose and wash it right off. Yeah. Oh, it's got like a filament. Yeah, it will not allow the paint. You know, to we, we met it, we went it, we're like, I'm into urban exploring. So I was into this abandoned suit factory, and we met these two. We didn't meet them. They were like, they you could see them. They they have backpacks, and as they're walking, you could hear that kitchen kitchen kitchen. The cans, you know, you could you could hear them like you're walking kitchen 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 like taggers, you know. And so we met these taggers. Like, can we film you? You know. So we go in this building. The floors are all gone. This guy's like walking. Like, no, don't go. I'm an engineer. You know, like, no, don't go there. That's gonna collapse. You know. He finds a spot, he starts tagging. It's kind of boring, you know. So we're like, you know, we got an idea, you know. So we get, we have, we're like, we're like into fireworks and stuff. We're like 50 year old guys that like fireworks, you know. We just have to have some stuff, right? So we give them one of these, these flares that we like sign our names and with, with uh, uh, cameras, right. you know, we would sign our names and stuff. We give it to him, and he's like spray painting, and all of a sudden it ignites his paint. You ever, you ever take a spray paint and go? Psh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this whole th this whole wall's on fire. And he's like, he freaks out at first. And, oh, this is pretty cool. Oh, wow. and he does a whole tag with this. On fire. Now, yeah, and we. Wow. Uh, I have a video of it. Oh, yeah. And I'll, I'll show. I'll, I'll put it wow. on there. Wow. And after he was all done, he's like, <laughs> he didn't have any work. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Lost all his hair in his yeah. eyes. You know, he he had like sunburn on his face. It was kind of funny. Good. I'll that's probably, cool. by the way, just so you guys know, I, I, I cut this stuff, so I'll probably cut that out. Yeah, 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 that's fine. So, now you know why we formed the Cleveland Indoor Air Quality Group. Oh, yeah. It, when John and I got together, what, eight years ago, nine years ago, nine years, something yeah. like that. I, I, I had a claim, remember? Yeah. My house flooded, and I said... I'm not calling the insurance company. I got guys. I'm going to clean this up. Your, your own house flood? Yeah, it was a rental property. The guy didn't pay his gas bill, so the water exploded. And it flooded his whole place. Froze. The pipe and, froze. Right. And, and, and destroyed the house the, because they were a duplex. So now I got this house that's totally damaged. So I get in there, and we start taking the insulation down, and it's full of mold. And I got shocked. And I said, what do I pay insurance for? I call the insurance company, and here comes Jimmy. And he came in, and that was it. We've been together ever since. So, that was eight years ago? Jim, and Jim never knew, you know, he probably knew about, about you know, the exterior, like waterproofing, but 
All, all I knew was to problems. stay away from all those lying waterproofers because none of them told the truth. Right. Oh no, they do. They they do that. They sell you that that machine that sucks the air out of the basement. Yeah. The right. fan in the box. The fan, the of the fan box. in the box. Yeah. Uh, oh, the they they said it's like a box. They said, <laughs> the fan in the box. They say that these are twenty three hundred dollar. But yeah. we'll give it to you for free. For free. Oh, because yeah. because our we have never crew. And it's made in China. <laughs> it is. Is it made? Does it say made in China? Yeah, I don't know, but uh, probably, probably. Well, somewhere because they, they they happen to have a crew always, and right around the corner. Uh, this week only, right. right? So this is that fan in a box. What was, I, what was I talking about? Well, the point is, is that you know when we started working together, and you know I already had the Tom was already an advisor on HVAC, and you were already with building science and and and. But the point is, is that we knew, you know, Ding the light went on and went, wait a minute, we've got all these experts, now we've got John as, as the foundations expert, we've got Chris Schumney as the roofing specialist, and he's been with us 15 years. Gee, got all the bases now we, we've got the bases covered. Now we can go out to somebody and say, okay, you know, Put lipstick on a pig. You solve the problem. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you know, a couple of scotches, a pig, and some lipstick. It might not be that bad. I mean, but you know, and, and this kind of this kind of segues into one of your one of your bloggers was very very uh, uh, cynical about mold, for example. Mold's a scam and. And you had a video that that uh, you downplayed mold in uh, uh, a few years ago, and I, I, I uh, but what you were really doing was emphasizing the, what caused the mold, and that was the water, right? And 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 that was rightly so. The problem with our industry is there's no mandatory CE credits. But guess what? It's not that mold is a scam. Mold can whack you. Oh. It's been proven. Oh yeah. University studies. It can kill you. It's the mole guys that are the scam. The, the guys that are two men in a truck that uh, that go out and, and say, "Yeah, we'll take care of your problem." And you know, they, mold, mold is everywhere, right? Mold is everywhere. Absolutely. Yeah, it's outside. Right so here. it's outside. But we have air. We have air movement on the outside. Yeah. Fresh air. This and that. So mm -hmm. mold is everywhere. I was told that that. Say you were to die. Say you were to die in the woods, and that dog were to die in the woods, or that deer, or even that fly. Whatever. Some place during that deterioration and decaying, you're going to have mushrooms growing from you. Mm -hmm. It comes from everything, right? So it's a matter of dealing with the exterior, which is not as bad as when you're confined on the inside of your home, when you have these mold spores, which are okay when they're wet because they don't go anywhere. They just start to fester and they grow and they live off the cellulose of whatever, cardboard, sure. drywall, yeah. latex paint, whatever, right? Ooh. It's okay Dust. when it's wet. Mm -hmm. It's okay when it's wet, right? But what happens when we go in and we fix it? It explodes. It, it, it dries up. It's like a volcano. Right? Poof. Yeah. Right? It dries up and then what happens? Hey, it's kind of hot outside. Let's turn the AC on. You got open cold airs from the basement, you know, those old houses that don't have closed systems, you know. And you turn the AC on and it starts sucking that stuff from the inside of the basement. Next thing you know, you're breathing mold spores. Then you got a problem. Oh, I gotta go see the doctor. What do they do? Drugs. They give you the antibiotics. Just and, go home, and right? You feel good. Yeah. Well, right? you know, actually now, Cleveland Clinic has actually established a, a department called Functional Medicine. And they brought in this guy named Dr. Mark Heyman, who was a nationally known guy. He's in a movie called Moldy. And it's their mission to educate the doctors because they, they maintain that this mold poisoning has been misdiagnosed for everything. And so they, they not only you try to get a, an appointment at the functional medicine department. Well, you know, <laughs> this is kind of strange because I was, I was saying that there's that nine-year-old boy yeah, right. that just had a heart transplant in the right. clinic 
send somebody out to their house to be able to evaluate the air quality and the conditions of the home. They found that the basement is totally wet right. and full of mold. So they basically sent somebody out there to clean it up. Now they have to dress it from the outside. Oh, the cleaning the hospital did. Oh, really? Wow. But I would love to, to, to I'm going to go see him after we leave here because he's in Amherst. And he gave his address and stuff. And basically, um, you know, there's a lot of this people. This is not Rainbow's and Baby's Children I with Dr. Dearborn, I, I right? This is. I thought it, they're in Pittsburgh. It's. It could be Rain. I think it is either Rainbow's or McDonald's House, I McDonald's. think it is. McDonald House. And they're in Pittsburgh. They're in Pittsburgh now. They won't let the kid go back because his immune system is so <coughs> compromised now because of the new heart. If he goes back into the house, there's a great possibility he can get sick and die. Well, there's no question. We, our technology specializes all over the place with immune compromised clients, heart transplant patients, liver transplant well, patients, I would like recovery to know. cancer patients, because we're the only permanent disinfecting system on the planet. Well, then we need, to, we, need to, we need to see who these people are that they got involved with that went out to the house, and I sent them a message, and while we were on the ferry coming here, he sent me a message and said, the mold man is there cleaning up the mold today. I what about the moisture problem? Well, well, this is where he lost, his wife lost her job. They're a half a million into this heart transplant. The guy is like, works his frickin' butt off. He got nothing. So he was referred to me through a friend. And we want to go and help him now. We want to help him. It's for, the, it's for his son. If it was for him or for whatever, hey, you're growing, you know, you got to. But now they have a legitimate reason. And, I, you know, I, I believe the more you give, the more you receive.